Hey everybody, welcome back to the seven week seven app building challenge. So we are in day three of week one and we are going to be continuing looking at the backend infrastructure for building the cable snap application. So to remind our viewers what we were doing till now is the day one we looked at what the cable snap application which is an iPhone app what it looks like. So we take a picture of a cable or a device and let's say the cable has gone bad. The application will tell us what kind of cable it is and what if it's a device picture that we take, it will tell us what kind of device it is um, and what kind of cables are possibly going to be connected to the device. This was the application and I explained the basics on how it works on the first day. Yesterday, we looked at the backend Lambda function in quite detail on how the Lambda function communicates with Bedrock, gets the output and passes it on to the client. Now that connection is not automatic and we are going to front Lambda with API Gateway and that's the third step we are going to look on the third day of our journey of week one. And this is how the code for the Lambda function looked like. If you remember this, uh, this particular application, there was uh, um, this particular system prompt, and then I went there, and then I was calling Cloud Opus 4, and then I called the call Cloud Sonnet 4 if Opus uh, did not come up with the right output, and then I passed the output and got the um, Amazon URL, which if you click, people can go to the Amazon store and buy that particular cable. So the idea was fairly straightforward and we were looking at the different steps that we go through. So we are going to front this with API Gateway. Why API Gateway? Why not just use the Lambda Invoke function? Because API Gateway has all these amazing advantages of you can surround it with WAF, which is a great uh, uh, attack protector, you know, like XLSI script attack, um, um, any kind of uh, DDoS attacks. These are different kinds of attacks uh, that can uh, possibly affect your application. And so we always suggest to keep the Lambda function in the back and front it with API gateway in any serverless architecture. So how I'm going to do that is for the Lambda function, I'm going to add a trigger, which is going to be API gateway. So let me create a new API. I'm going to make it open now, there is a certain risk to this because anybody can access this API if they get access to this. And so if you wanted to secure it even better, there are other ways to do it where, for example, you could have JWT token exchange or you could have uh, some kind of an IAM authorizer, uh, different ways that you can think about. But in addition, also preventing the headers, also making sure that we have the right IAM permissions for only our Lambda function to be authorized to access Bedrock. All of that put together, you can make this API secure. But for most practical purposes, let's keep this open for now. And uh, I'm going to add this API. So you can see here that's API gateway added as a trigger. This is the API gateway. Now, if I directly try and use this API and try to test it on Postman, it's not going to work. Why? Because the course headers for API Gateway are usually not properly configured. So we have to go ahead into the API Gateway service and you can see here that any route is available to be a method to be available. And so if I go into course here, you can see here that no origins are allowed at this point. So this is the principle of least privilege. So for now, let me add all origins. Again, you can secure this while testing by making sure that you only allow your IP address or uh, if you deploy an Amplify, you want only your Amplify to be able to access this API gateway URL. So you can restrict this. Okay? So for now, I'm going to allow everything. The headers, uh, the control headers, I'm going to have the content type because the content type is going to be the application JSON. And then I'm going to allow uh, an authorization header. And if you have a security token, for example, uh, security token, let's have this, for example. And then if you have a date header, some sort of future proof in the app. Yeah. And then if you have any API key. So usually these are the five headers that uh, I add for all my applications. Um, Z, A, and Z. Let's say Z API key. 
And I want to allow all the methods, typically because the options method, if you're doing it from a browser, you need a pre-flight request. And so the option method is really good to always add. Post definitely have tried. Get typically you need to add. And so it's okay to add all of these things as well. In case you have any use cases, you might want to use the other headers. And so once I'm done with it, I'm going to save it. So now we are ready for testing this on Postman. So now I have an API gateway. I have the uh, API gateway endpoint, and you can go in here that this API gateway is now going to trigger the Lambda function. And so if I go here, you can see that course is enabled here. So let me take this API gateway endpoint and uh, do a post request from uh, Postman. And so here, if you remember from yesterday, we put a JSON object with uh, uh, so it's image underscore base64 as a base64. And if you remember yesterday, I just showed you a small script on how you can create base64. If you forgot, fairly straightforward to get from AI assistance. So this is the particular image that I'm taking. If to recap, 3075 was looking something like this. And uh, this is a USB A to a DC barrel connector, right? So it's a little complicated this one, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to take this base 64 and uh, put it here. And then we uh, send the request. So now it's just a waiting game. Again, I think this particular application takes maybe uh, 20 to 30 seconds, I want to say. If you, you know, there's frequent testing, what that means is uh, if not, there's going to be a warm start problem for the Lambda function to be able to call the um, bedrock. Now, there are other ways to get past that. Uh, if you've heard of things like snap start and things like that, you know, there are faster ways to get past the problem. But uh, typically what you want to do is uh, uh, make sure that you have quick access, okay? So I already got an issue where uh, this did not uh, help us too much. So let me actually go in here and make sure that I have all my headers uh, configured properly. Make sure that I have get post options, everything is there. You know why? because I have ZAMZ security token. So I'm actually trying to do live uh, <laughs> debugging with all of you. All right, so let me do this and then save this and go here. And you can see that it actually gives us the right answer. Okay, so USB A to DC barrel jack power cable this is a USB A to DC barrel jack power cable used for this, 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 this. And then if I go in here into the Amazon link, um, you can see that. Uh, so the security token was probably not important. So the first time it was just a random error. So now I just have to look at the cable end very carefully. And uh, typically I would buy something like this where you have multiple possibilities. So what we need is probably this one. Okay, so that's why as a warning I put in the app that uh, you need to inspect closely before actually buying. So that's pretty much uh, everything for today, uh, viewers. And I just want to say that now that we have the API gateway, API exposed, the last thing in the next couple of days, or maybe in one more day we'll finish this, is to incorporate that uh, API gateway URL or the endpoint into our application. So we, the next thing we just have to do is look at the Swift code. And uh, tomorrow I'll just quickly go through a Swift code and show where that API gateway URL goes. And after that, it's all about deploying to the uh, App Store, making sure that you get past all the App Store criteria and things like that. And so then for week one, we should be done with deploying our first application. Hope you're having a good time. Hope you're also following along and building your own products at the same time. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, and share. With that, I'll see you all tomorrow for day four of week one to look at the Swift program. Have a great day, everyone.